Today, the House considers a GOP version of the Violence Against Women Act already under threat of a veto by the president. And the White House has put the Republican-controlled House on notice that protections in this bill, well, they don't go far enough. The Senate passed a reauthorization of the original 1994 act last month with 15 Republicans crossing the aisle. I'm joined now by California Congresswoman Jackie Speer, an outspoken advocate of women's rights. Congresswoman, it's nice to have you here. And let's just remind everybody that this law originally passed overwhelmingly by partisan support back in 94. It's been twice renewed without a fight. Has the environment in Congress become so toxic that even an issue that should be kind of straightforward, a no-brainer, uh, like helping battered women become this political hot potato? I would agree with you, actually. The, the toxic environment right now is something that, for members who have been here a long time, say they've never seen anything like it. I mean, we are talking about violence in the home, domestic violence. Why would anyone be for that? Why would we not want to throw the net as comprehensively as possible so that Native American women, so that gays and lesbians who are in uh, domestic relationships can have the same protections, so that young people in college environments um, can have that kind of protection and have record kept about the cases. This is something where it is overwhelmingly supported by both parties in the Senate. It should be overwhelmingly supported in the House. And in fact, there are now Republican moderates who are stepping out and speaking out and saying that the bill is flawed and that we should go back to look at the Senate version or a similar right. version by Judy Biggert. Congresswoman, let's go over this because we did learn in the last hour the sponsor of the GOP bill, Congresswoman Sandy Adams, who's going to appear with me later in this hour, has now added a manager's amendment to the bill that would rework language to include coverage of immigrants, Native Americans, but still does not include the LGBT community. Uh, here's what the Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers said about the inclusion of LGBT couples last night on Hardball. Why don't you cover people who are not in a traditional marriage? Why would you limit it to just traditional marriage folk? Well, what I, uh, those, are, those are side issues that have been attached to this bill, and I think it's very well, important to... they're not side to, issues if you're getting beat that, up by your partner. That's not a side issue. It's your life. That, that is an issue. There's, there's, no, there's nothing under federal law that currently recognizes same-sex couples. And so, Congresswoman, first, have you seen the amendment, and if so, what do you make of them excluding same-sex couples? Well, I've not yet seen the amendment. They're obviously getting a lot of heat from their own membership, and that's why this manager's amendment is being posted. Uh, I would say to the Republican uh, restriction on making this law cover same-sex couples is, is really preposterous. I mean, if we're talking about making sure there's not violence in the home, regardless of what the makeup of that relationship is, we don't want violence in the home. And people that become victims of violence in the home should be able to access the services that would be provided uh, through VAWA, which has been there for domestic partners who are not married. So it is really an unsustainable argument that's being made by some of my Repub Republican colleagues. And I'm hopeful that before this is over, they're going to do what the Senate did, right. which is embrace it. Uh, real quickly, though, before we let you go because members of the GOP they've denied that there is this waged war against women they don't even like that title but in fact 14 Republican women in the House penned this Politico op-ed today calling the so-called war on women a myth that quote Republican women like us would never be a part of a party that didn't believe in women's equal rights equal pay for equal work and strong laws against sexual violence H how do you respond to that and are, are you afraid that the war on women argument could backfire against Democrats Actually, I think the, the assault on women, I don't like calling it a war myself, the assault on women is real. And you can go into any community in this country right now, and women who are over the age of 45 are absolutely feeling it in their gut. And they're, for the first time in many years, feeling compelled to take a stand. And I think what's happening among my re Republican sisters is that they have to step out now because it's getting too hot even in their communities. The truth is there has been an assault on women. And you can look at it in the state legislatures across this country where there have been over 900 bills introduced to restrict access to reproductive health. Um, the issues here on, on restricting contraception coverage, not one Republican woman has spoken out in support of making sure the family planning is available to women. And yet, 95 to 98 percent of them have used 
some form of contraception right. in their lives, and yet they're not willing to speak up. So either they're being silenced by the GOP uh, majority, or they are not really speaking out on behalf of women. Congresswoman Spear, great to see you this morning. Thanks for your time. And as I pointed out, the sponsor of the GOP bill, Congresswoman